Today is Thursday, the 29th of August. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We hear again Romans 4.16. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Many people believe the proclamation of the gospel is nothing more than a report of what Christ has done and a lesson in what we must do to redeem ourselves with Christ's help. They also think the holy sacraments are merely empty signs of the grace a person has already obtained. But God be praised, this is not so. Christ has indeed already perfectly reconciled the whole world with God, redeeming it and acquiring for it an eternal righteousness. The gospel and the holy sacraments are divine promises to all who hear the gospel and use the sacraments. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the three divine witnesses in heaven who testify to the righteousness obtained for all sinners. And the Spirit, the water, and the blood, that is the gospel, baptism, and holy communion, are three divine witnesses on earth. Wherever the gospel is preached, God absolves people, and Christ's righteousness is offered and delivered to them. Whenever people are baptized, God declares himself to be their father, Christ to be their savior, and the Holy Ghost to be their comforter. Whenever people partake of Holy Communion, Christ gives them his redemption, forgives their sins, and offers them eternal righteousness, sealing this, his promise, with the presentation of his true body and blood. What God once promised Abraham with the words, in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed, he now promises to all people through the word and the holy sacraments. No person can then say, oh, that God would come from heaven and himself speak with me and promise me righteousness and eternal life. Then I would believe and be joyful. For God truly speaks with every person throughout the, or through the gospel. In it, he promises righteousness and eternal life and seals this promise with the holy sacraments. These three means of grace are the audible and visible representatives of the triune God on earth, God's mouth, voice, and hand and they give Christ's righteousness. They are the receipt God makes out and delivers after Christ paid the debt of all people. What else but faith is necessary for a person to be righteous before God? Where there is a free promise, faith alone is the means to rejoice in that promise. In the word and in his holy sacraments, God promises to grant righteousness freely to all who use it. Thus, love, hope, humility, patience, or any other virtue is not the means of attaining righteousness. It comes by faith alone. As soon as a person determines to obtain righteousness by some other means, God's promise is no longer sure to him. He makes it a lie, and he grounds his righteousness on the quicksand of his own works. Let us never forget what the Holy Apostle writes in today's text. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. This doctrine of justification through faith alone 
contains the only foundation of all hope and salvation. It is the crux of the entire Bible and the key to all other mysteries of faith that are revealed in Holy Scripture. It is the article on which the church stands or falls. It is the sun that alone gives us light in the darkness of life and in the night of trial and death. Where this sun no longer shines, nothing but hellish darkness overtakes us. Whoever does not cling to this doctrine is not safe against error. But he who holds it firmly can certainly distinguish between true and false prophets, pure doctrine and erring spirits, and the true and false churches. Oh, it is well with him who holds fast to this doctrine. He has a right indicator of the way against all temptation, a firm comfort against all anguish of sin, and an open door through death into eternal life. And so we pray. And thou, O Holy Spirit, my comforter and guide, Grant that in Jesus' merit I always may confide. Him to the end confessing, whom I have known by faith. Give me thy constant blessing and grant a Christian death. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.